We've got a for sale by owner six unit apartment building that we're going to be doing a deep analytical dive for my man Garrett. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. As always, folks, I am your host, James Wise, and this uh, this is your show, right? This is the show that uh, we work together to analyze deals, to build your portfolios, grow your portfolios, and today we're going to be going over this bad boy right here. This is a six-unit apartment building that my guy Garrett, this was, uh, I'm not 100% sure as a matter of fact, right? I know this is a for sale by owner. It's an off-market deal that Garrett, you have currently got this bad boy, oh, going down the street, oh, go back, go back. You have got this bad boy under contract for $220,000 and you wanted me to look at it for you, right? Because that's what we do on the show. We do a couple different things, right? You guys can uh, send me your criteria, send me your wants, your needs, your goals, your situation, and I will go out and I will find deals that fit that for you. In addition, because I'm only one person, Holton Wise is only one company. Yeah, we're the number one seller of real estate in Cleveland. Uh, investment real estate, right? Investment real estate. We're the number one seller of investment, this type of stuff, right? In Cleveland, the Cleveland market. Uh, but there's 5,000 other realtors, guys. There's foreclosures. There's bank deals. Some of you guys are doing your own direct mail. We're an a la carte service here trying to help you guys become better investors. So, Garrett, you come across this deal. Uh, Off-market deal. I don't know uh, how you came across this, but I, I'm happy you did. I think you put together a pretty solid deal. And you wanted my take on it to make sure you're not making a bad move, making a risky move, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, this is an off-market deal, so we have a uh, you know less less things to go off of, right? We don't have any fancy charts or performas. Uh, this is going to be very basic, right? We're not even going to add any fancy charts into this video. I, I just want to keep this super basic, right? Because, you know, if you're going to do for sale by owner stuff, guys, you know, I think people, uh, they watch like my show or they see other, you know, real estate brokers and, and they see like, you know, well-polished, put-together offerings, and then they want to go and try to direct mail and talk to for sale by owners themselves and, like, try to really get their teeth into the business, right, get down in the trenches, and I, that's great. I love that. I'm here to help you guys do that, but just when you do that, right, don't expect any fancy uh, numbers or calculations or charts or performance, right? That's what I'm here for, though, right, to, to help you navigate through the lack of, of that stuff. So first off, man, this building, you want you had some questions. You're like, yo, dude, just pretty much, you know, let me know. Am I barking up the right trees? A solid deal. What's up with the neighborhood? Well, the neighborhood, first of all, B, uh, it's a C-class neighborhood, right? Maple Heights, I like Maple Heights quite a bit. It's a C-class neighborhood. You really can't go wrong in Maple Heights. And the cool thing here is you just have a ton of the similar built buildings, right? They're all up and down the street there, just, you know, commercial district. Everything is pretty cool. Nothing major to worry about, right? Now, I actually own a ton of buildings just like this. There is another uh, area. Like, there's a street that looks similar to this, except for there's, like, even more, right? There's probably, like, three times as many of these kind of buildings. And they're all similar buildings, right? Built around the 50s. Uh, very similar builds to what I got. Mine, mine is um, it's on the border of Brooklyn and Cleveland, and I own, dude, I own a ton of buildings uh, up and down that street, and it looks very similar to this. As a matter of fact, I was setting up the show, getting ready, and my media guy, he's like, "Oh, you're doing uh, something on Ridge Road in Brooklyn there, because uh, it looks just like it." And we've, you know, we've done a lot of stuff about that particular stuff, but no. This is a different little neighborhood. This is Maple Heights, but there ain't nothing to worry about here, bro. This is a this is a solid neighborhood. You don't have to worry about Maple Heights. Now, as far as the chart, right? This is this is all we got to work off of, right? And that's okay, man. That's all we really need. Okay, we don't really need to work off of anything other than this, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna navigate you through this. And again, man, this is for sale by owner, so we ain't gonna get nothing fancy. 
Now, one thing to note, right? Here's your rent roll, right? You know, one, two, three, four, all paying six hundo. Unit five and six paying five fifty. So you're getting thirty five fifty a month coming in. Now I, I could not find anywhere on the internet the bed bath mix. Uh, of this building. However, because I own a crap ton of buildings that are just like this, the way they are typically built is on floor number three and uh, floor number two, okay? You got two apartments, each floor, two bed, one bath. I did find that there's six baths in this. I couldn't find the bed count. So we 100% know our bath count is uh, right. So usually it's floor number two, floor number three, Two apartments, each floor, two beds, one bath, and then the garden unit or the basement unit, however you want to call it, those are typically two one one units, right? One bed, one bath, and then the laundry is also down there, as is uh, the mechanicals, right? You got all your furnaces, your hot water tanks, uh, laundry for the tenants, things of that nature. And this particular rent roll would fall in line with that, right? The first four units, $600 and then $50 less per month for the other two. So I'm going to assume these four are two ones and these two are one ones. That's a safe assumption. Now, as far as these numbers are concerned, um, they're not exactly uh, what I would anticipate. I, I would ant Some of them are, are similar, but some of them I would anticipate a little higher. Let's just go from the top. Water sewer, 3200 I broke that down. That's like an average of like $44 uh, per unit per month, right? Um, like, fuck, dude. I don't know. <laughs> like, that could be right, right? Here's the thing. It's, it's water sewer, okay? This is a, a variable motherfucking uh, expense, bro. Like, it's water sewer. Like, you got to pay it. There's no way you can't pay it. Um, if you want to know why you, as a landlord, have to pay it, you cruise on down to HoltonWise.com. Check out our FAQ. I've, I've got that all written there. But this is going to be variable, right? This is going to go up. This is going to go down. And it's going to go up and down based on tenants, right? So don't think you could, like, just look at historical numbers from a particular building and think that that's going to be reflective, right? Because, you know... Fucking maybe the tenants five years ago don't don't live there anymore, right? It's you're gonna get new tenants and everybody's different, man. Maybe they got one kid, two kids, no kids. Maybe they take two showers a day. Maybe they take two showers a week. Maybe they take thirty minute showers, ten minute shower. You know, it, it, it's completely uh, you know variable based upon the behavior of a human being, right? So there's never gonna be a way to completely pinpoint that down. Although what I do is I typically average it out at $75 a unit. I found that to be the closest estimate we can get. And that's a little bit more conservative than yours, right? So I think it's better when you're estimating your expenses to, to go with the higher expense like I'm doing. Uh, you know, just so if you, uh, you know, if you overproduce or the building performs better than that great that's a bonus right so on here we have 32 i would add another 22 to that trash uh we got a trash estimate um no reason to uh believe that that is going to be incorrect we'll go ahead and roll with that hallway electric same deal also taxes and insurance no reason to mess with those those seem fair to me one thing i think uh a lot of investors might forget when you make the leap from four four unit buildings up to five and above, you know, the ball game changes a little bit, right? We, we're getting into commercial assets now, so things are a little bit different, right? You got to deal with the parking lot now. The tenants don't have their own trash cans anymore, right? You got to deal with uh, dumpster services and stuff like that. So those those are going to be fine. Now, this particular line, uh, maintenance and management, 3600 I got some issues with that. I think that's a little low. Um, as far as the management goes, I would add 660. So they ha you got maintenance and management at 3600 a year here. I would add 660 and that would just cover the management, not including the maintenance, right? Um, so what I would like to do is just add another line item here. Uh, repairs, maintenance, vacancy, capex, all that stuff, right? I usually calculate 15% for all of that stuff, right? Because you're going to have to handle unit turnovers. You're going to have to fix stuff up. You're going to have to fix this, fix that. You're going to have to replace hot water tanks, furnaces, the roof, things of that nature. And your tenants, they ain't going to pay every single month. So I would like to add another 63.90 uh, onto this. And then grass and plow, you got 700 on here. That's a fair estimate. Uh, and then you got phone security fire department at 960. I'm not 100% sure 
what specifically you guys are talking about with that, but let's estimate these uh, with conservative estimates, right? So somebody is spending 960 on something. Uh, I don't necessarily know if we need to take it off. I guess we'll just leave it on there. It's always better to uh, under promise over deliver, but I don't really know uh what exactly you guys specifically mean to that like do you have a security system maybe uh is that what that you know is and you're paying for the phone line and the internet line for that security system uh, i don't think you necessarily need a security system for a building like this if you if you want to get one cool but uh, i don't necessarily think you need it right so this estimate you add up all the numbers provided, you know, 19,538. But if you add the numbers I added to it, it's going to be 28,788. Now, as far as the income, that's the monthly, right? Those are all yearly numbers. The monthly income is listed on here with the six current tenants at 35.55. You bust that out to the yearly income, it's going to be 42,600. And you subtract that. You subtract the new estimated expenses that I've come up with, which is $28,788. Uh, that's going to leave you with an NOI. You're going to make $13,812 a year on average. And if you buy this at $220,000, that is a 6.3 cap. Now, I know people might look at 6.3 cap and not be like super duper excited about that. But hey, that's multifamily in the Cleveland market, right? Uh, it's very high in demand. So whether or not that is like the cash flow number that you find super sexy and you're very happy with, because I know my estimated expenses, you know, it's almost $10,000 higher than what you're anticipating. Uh, and that definitely lowers that cap there. But here's the deal. The cap is lower. That's, that's probably uh, the best, most accurate representation of the cap, 6.3. But don't think that because it's only a 6.3, that means you could probably get the building for less than 220 because 220 is actually a badass price, right? The cap rates on these apartment buildings are going to be lower. Um, here's the other thing too, right? When people get into the commercial, they assume that all the valuation is just going to be based upon cap rate and you could really fluctuate it. Uh, not exactly, right? We're still dealing with very small assets, okay? And look, it's very easy to pull comps on them because you got them all down the damn street, right? You see all those? Like, it's it's very easy to pull comps. Like I said, I myself, I own a crap ton of buildings that are literally identical buildings to this. And uh, in pretty much in the whole Cleveland area, unless it's in, like, the ghetto or something, in neighborhoods similar to this, you're going to pay like around $250,000 for these things, right? So assuming there's like no major issues, and when I say you're going to pay about $250,000, I mean you're going to pay about $250,000, and I'm not anticipating anything is brand new. That doesn't mean two hundred fifty, dollars and you got six new furnaces, six new hot water tanks, brand new roof. I'm talking like all that stuff is varying age lengths. Uh, some might be newer, some might be towards the end of life. You know, just moderate, mid-level stuff in, in the middle there, right? Uh, you're still going to have to pay 250000 or so on a normal basis. Like, honestly, if you picked it up, you got this thing off market, you could literally turn right around tomorrow, put it on Holton Wise TV, and I'd sell it for $250,000. So uh, cap rate aside, it's still a solid deal, right? You, you're essentially buying something for about $30,000 less than what I would normally uh, see it go for on the open market, right? You might even be able to get that as high as two sixty. dollars uh, One other thing, too. I want to point out, there's a little bit extra meat on the bone here too, bro. Uh, as far as this rent roll is concerned, um, these four units that I believe are going to be our two-bedroom units, okay, all renting at 600 uh, what we could do is typically like market rent for these, like similar units to this in a neighborhood like this, we'd probably get that up to like 675 maybe even 700 right? Now... I don't know the condition of the inside of the, the building, right? I don't have any pictures or anything. I just have what you've given me here and what I can find online, and it's off market, so we're, we're working with extremely limited info. But um, any of those units, like, don't think that, like, uh, you could just immediately remove those tenants and do no work to the units and, and get them up to market. I'm sure you're going to have to do a turnover renovation, and I don't see why there would be, like, all brand new kitchens and baths in these units. I mean, typically 
you know, we see dated stuff. So when the units do turn, what I like to do in situations like this is just let them naturally turn, do a badass renovation, get the kitchen and the bath looking good, and then go to market rent. So I would leave all these people alone, perhaps try to slowly increase their rent like 10, 15 bucks a year. But no, there is meat on the bone. These four units, we should be able to see those go up to 675, approximately 700. And these two one bedroom units, you can get that around six, maybe 615, 620, six and a quarter, things like that. So there is a little bit more meat on the bone. I don't think you need to worry about the neighborhood. It's a solid neighborhood, dude. I like the neighborhood. This is a solid investment, right? 6.3 cap is my best estimate uh, with the limited info I have. So long as when you get your own third-party home inspection, you don't have anything uh, major, like I'm talking like major structural issues, uh, 220 is a hell of a price for this, bro. Uh, so you found yourself a great deal. You should definitely move forward with this particular deal, in my opinion. I think it'd be a solid cash cow for you. Of course, if you want to kick the property management over to Holton Wise, we'll handle that for you. Uh, you just go to HoltonWise.com too, Garrett. I don't know if you already know this or not, but you just click our FAC right here. And uh, you could go to the property management FAC and... Here's our uh, property management agreement. We have this available for download for everybody. It goes over every single thing we're going to charge you for. We're all about being transparent. And then we have a video tutorial uh, on pretty much all types of questions, how we handle everything in regards to the property management. The water and sewer question that I uh, talked about earlier that's in this fact as well so how we would be able to onboard this property for you once you closed all right there for you bro including charges everything yada yada one other thing i didn't mention to you're dealing with maple heights so there's going to be a point of sale inspection well at least there should be see we're just coming out of covid right now and cities like are changing the rules like literally every day uh, there was always a uh, point of sale in Maple Heights, and I've got a video in the show notes below that explains the Cleveland point of sale process. Um, we've always had to do that, but then when COVID came out, the, people weren't sending inspectors to buildings, but then they've been like literally changing the rules like every other day. Uh, you know, and I haven't sold a, a, a proper a six unit apartment building in Maple Heights in the last 72 hours, uh, so I don't exactly remember where they're at right now, but typically. Uh, the city's going to want to do a point of sale, and then either you're going to need to assume those violations or the seller's going to clear them off. Now, again, I think you're getting it for a hell of a price. So if there's, like, minor stuff on this POS, like they just want some, like, minor concrete work done, like, 5, 10K or something like that, dude, just just do the work and take the deal, bro, because, again, uh, you're getting it under market value, in my opinion, solid deal. I mean, if you can convince the seller to give you a clear POS, more power to you, uh, but, dude, it's, it's a solid deal, bro. So uh, good job out of you. I hope everything I gave you today, um, you know, I hope this additional due diligence assistance makes you uh, confident with your deal and you could uh, remove your contingencies and move forward and close this sucker. And then uh, if you want to kick it to Holton Wise sort of property management, that's great. We'd love to add this to our portfolio. If you got other plans, that's totally cool too. A la carte services. If you want to just turn around and try to flip this sucker, put it on Holton Wise TV and we'll sell it to somebody for about $250,000, which is what I believe its true value is. We could do that as well, man. Anything you want to do, bro, uh, let's knock it out. Everybody else, why we got HoltonWise.com up. I just want to show you guys uh, something here. Let's go back to the top of this here. Fact. If we go to the property search for sale tab, I got two options for you all, right? First option, the investment properties for sale show. Those are all the properties we are selling. So if Garrett decides he wants to turn around and just sell this apartment building for 250 on uh, Holton Wise TV, this is where it would be. Video tutorial or video tours, drone footage. We break everything down. Just a beautiful polished message making everything so simple, right? What we have here. This is being sold for sale by owner. The exact opposite of how I would do it. No bells, no whistles, very limited information. If you're somebody who's looking for a ton of information, you want to know exactly what you're getting. You don't want to deal with unknowns. This is what you want to do. That's how you buy properties right from us. We uh, let you bid right then and there. You just send our team an email. Next, we have the MLS search and analysis show, which is what you're watching right now. It's what I talked about at the beginning of the show, man. 
You could just tell me your wants, your needs, your goals. I'll go out, I'll find it for you, I'll present you properties. Or if you've come across a property, you've gone under contract, or you know, you're thinking about this, or you're thinking about that, and you just want me to come give you an unbiased uh, you know, opinion on the deal. Go here, pick a package. I like the 10 property package. It's the cheapest package we got, and it allows us to work together long term because, like, dude, ain't nobody coming to Cleveland to buy one or two houses, right? Uh, this is a game of scale. You want to build a portfolio. You need a bunch of doors, right? A small amount of doors don't really get you nowhere. Uh, investing in real estate ain't really worth it if you just want one or two properties, right? I think you got to scale up to at least 10 properties, probably 20 to 30 to really make an impact on your life. Right, so that's how uh, all that stuff works, man. So if you guys want to work with our team, that's how you do it. Other than that, y'all, that's all I got for today's show. As always, I'm James Wise of Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys, put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Good day, everyone. It's Angela Remora here, your favorite Australian and the founder and owner of Ohio Cashflow. Over the last five years, Ohio Cashflow has established itself as the most reputable turnkey real estate investment company in the country. We offer solid B-class properties in Toledo, Ohio. We work and live in the same areas that we sell in. So when we sell your property, your tenants become our neighbors. We only take on a handful of investors every month. So for your chance to work with one of the best in the business, please fill out our investor application form, which you can find in the video notes below. Thanks for listening. And as we say down under, I'll catch you later, mate. Is that it? Yeah, we're done. All right, cool. Based in Indianapolis, Indiana, FS Houses is the premier investment property brokerage with an in-house property management department that can take care of all those unwanted landlord headaches. FS Houses can offer you the complete turnkey solution as well as wholesale properties offered to you at a discounted rate. With a network of thousands of active investors, wholesalers, and brokers, FS Houses can help you sell your property for top dollar on the open market or in a hurry to motivated investors seeking distressed real estate. Visit fshouses.com or call 317-492-9025 for more information on the Indianapolis, Indiana real estate. Rent Tech Direct provides you with an easy to use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With Rent Tech Direct, you'll also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built-in marketing tools. Just enter the details of your property and Rent Tech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia, and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.